Hello and we're back. Um, this is going to be um, number three, part three of the Lutron programming um, feature that I'm doing on my um, YouTube channel. Um, so in part two, this is basically where we got. Um, we um, added some loads to various rooms and we added some equipment into our equipment cupboard. Um, or equipment panel which is here and from there we have obviously connected or yeah I guess connected the circuits to the load so you can see here on the adaptive module which is this module down here we have a chandelier 5 amp sockets dining room pendant and a 5 amp socket connected um, on our 0 10 dimming modules um, this is number two here. Um, we have some down lights, accent lighting, etc., etc. And then on a switching module, switching module number three, we have some garden spikes. And we've got a motor module in this example as well um, at the top here, which will be doing some office blinds. So the next tab at the top of our list here is program. Um, actually, before we do that, there is one other extremely important um, part of programming. Um, you do at some point really need to make your link assignments. Um, so let's click on link assignments here. I don't believe I've done this already. So if you look at this um, section here, you can see our um, this is basically our project. And this enclosure device one is actually the processor. Now at the moment on link one, there's two links on the processor, each capable of uh, controlling 100 devices on each link. Uh, link one is set to RF, so um, you can obviously wirelessly control some Lutron devices, um, providing you've added a hybrid repeater as part of your project, but that's another that's another episode, I think that's another part of our programming. So um, what we'll do at the moment is we'll leave link one as, as an RF channel, but on link two, if I click on that, that's just a standard QS bus link. Um, and you can see over here, we can see our rooms, basically. So what we're doing here is you can see an international C-touch plate for the front door. So we'll add that to that link. So basically, we're just saying that those devices are connected onto that loop of wire basically that link so we can add all of these um, whole, whole of the ground floor we, we're not we've not really connected anything on the first floor yet or done any programming on the first floor or added circuit so I'll leave that one out for now so at the bottom here in the item description you can see these devices are all connected now to link number two of our processor so that's a very important step um, probably more important when you when you're going to transfer your project or activate devices on your project but we're not going to go into that just yet our next tab after design is program so I mean bearing in mind this is a very simple project we're building here but it's just a bit of a guide on um, you know building a, a simple functional um, Lutron Homeworks QS um, project so this tab is equally as important as all of the rest really um, this is the area where you assign circuits levels um, and various other things to the buttons so um, to start with we have at the top here my front door plate you can scroll through by clicking next or previous or you can go to your various rooms and you can see which control plates are actually assigned to that room which we obviously did in the design tab um, controls here so on this in this section here we added our control plates so let's go back to program so we're starting off in, at the, in the entrance hall front door so we've got for the entrance hall um, over here in this tab we have current area you can select if you wanted this button for example to control some office lights I'm not sure why you'd want to do that but if you did then you can select other areas and you can see the circuits that are in the other areas that we've added for now let's go back to current area 
So this button's bright, so generally this would be 100% all circuits. You know, um, I've designated it as a bright um, level um, as de designated on the button. Um, so I'm going to set that to 100. Soft, you could set them all to 50, or you might want the chandelier to 25. So if you look at these sliders here, this, this kind of little drop-down menu, you can do various, set various levels. If you don't want 50, and you want 65, you can actually type in 65% there. Um, so it's not just limited to to these levels. Um, so you can actually um, set in in you know um, percentages um, per one percent if you really want. Um, also, across here we have fade rates, so you can change the fade rate. So when that button is pressed it will fade over two seconds to reach the level 65%, for example. Um, you can increase that to, um, I think you can go up to 100, I think you can go up to 120. Let's have a quick look, oh no, 160. Oh, okay, I'm not sure what the limit of the fade rate is actually, but um, I think there is a limit. Just have a quick look here. Um, what have I got? That's it. Two two four. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the limit is there uh, because I, I was working on a project where I needed to um, set a long fade rate so that when they switched some lights off, they had time to go to the door, um, lock the door, walk down the corridor, and then exit the building before basically the lights faded. So it's quite a useful little uh, function that there. And there's also a delay, so you can delay. Um, when this function happens. Um, so if you did want to extend a button press um, then it's quite simple to add a delay and then a fade if you wanted to extend it further. But basically that's how simple it is to um, to adjust your levels per button. Then the off button of course will be off. Also at the top here you can see we've got some button types. There's lots of other information here which is more detailed which we may look at in, on another video but um, for now I'll just concentrate on um, these two here so we've got single action the button could be a toggle so that would mean um, you, you can see it, whenever I select this drop down we get different menus here so we've got press on you can have a double tap so a double tap can invoke a different um, response press and hold could make another thing happen um, on toggle basically you, you could press it on and press it off so it could act almost like a normal with a, a conventional switch and um, but there's other um, functions here so the off level could be at a certain you know it doesn't necessarily need to be zero percent and um, there's double pack tap there's press and hold again um, so there's lots of options here and um, dual action press on release double tap again um, <clears throat> you can make that button a raise button if you really wanted to so if I click yes here then then that could be a master raise so you could raise and lower but there's no real need to do that because on these plates that I've got here not all the plates but um, these plates have got a raise and lower button as you can see here master raise and master lower or single scene raise single scene lower and other options and um, going back to bright um, we'll change that back to single action I'll just need to add these uh, back in here again so there we go um, Okay, so that's basically um, programming there of the plate, and that's in the current area. Um, a welcome scene may well have. Um, you might want the entrance hall to come on. And also, um, the kitchen as well. So, you know, often when you come into the house, you walk in, the first place you go to maybe is the kitchen to make a coffee or to uh, prepare something or put something away. So, just with one single button press, you can... Um, bring other areas on. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, maybe the lounge. We could bring the lounge on at a low level as well. 50% there um, on our welcome button. Then goodbye, that's reserved for when you actually exit the building. So really when using Lutron systems, I would recommend putting Lutron everywhere because then this option allows you to, um, there we go, I've just selected all areas. So you could basically have oh, goodbye as zero percent for every area so when you leave the, the house um, you can press that button and be assured that every light in the house is switched off 
a great feature. Um, then we've got another outside button here. Actually, this will be a toggle button because we've only got one button. And obviously, we want that to turn the outside lights on and off. So I'll set that to toggle. We'll go to our external area. We've got our garden spikes here. So I'll set that to on. Um, when you, so when it's pressed, it comes on and it's already actually in toggle. If you look at the off level, it's already set itself to off. You don't need to set that. It's already figured that out that you're probably going to want to toggle between on and off level. So that's already done. Um, so it's just a simple overview there. Just a quick video I wanted to put out um, just regarding um, the next step of um, the Lutron Homeworks programming. And that's that's very basic programming. There's lots of other types of programming you can do. Um, there's conditional programming here, um, which I'll briefly show you, but we can go into this a bit further um, some other time. But this really allows you to add if, if and then, and various other conditions. Like this. So if I guess, just give you a quick demo, uh, select a condition. So maybe at um, a certain time of the day, so if the time of the day is between 12 and 1, uh, 1 p.m., then add an action, uh, run action 1. We haven't actually programmed the action, but you could run a, a different action. So between these hours, this button could do something completely different as it compared to what it does between other hours of the day. Um, you can, uh, yeah, so you can add actions um, and then you could add, you don't need to stop it there, you could add or if it's um, add a condition between times of the day, so between, if it's between maybe two and Three. Oops. Then um, do something else. So the actions are actually set up here. So you can see in this window here we've got action one, um, and that's brought up the, the the circuits basically in the house. So we can kind of add an, an action. So um, you know if it's between certain times actually um, that button might well bring the garden spikes on once again why you'd want to do that I don't know this is just an example um, um, that you can basically make the buttons do various things at various times of the day but we'll go into that a little bit further a little bit more detailed some other time um, so I'll just change that back to a normal button and go back to our current area and just reprogram that back to as it was and there we go Thanks again for watching my video. Um, I hope it's been informative again. Um, please subscribe. I can see the subscriber list rising, which is great. It, it kind of tells me that I'm maybe doing something right and I'm being of some help um, or inf inf I'm being informative um, to anybody who's interested in uh, this kind of thing, um, especially Lutron Homeworks. It's like one of my favorite um, pieces of equipment to use, actually. Um, I will be doing some more Reiko as well, because that's another lower cost um, solution for lighting controls and some other things. But um, as I said before in some of my videos, if you've got any suggestions on th um, things you'd like to explore, um, how maybe to program certain things or if certain things are possible with Lutron or Reiko or very other, various other things, then please leave a comment, leave a question, and on my next video I can answer that. Okay, have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.